Okay, uh, earlier I was talking about a little uh, tube cleaning, and uh, again, I'll just go back to the uh, Deoxit uh, brand cleaner for uh, a lot of this stuff. So, uh, again, a pipe cleaner, small piece soaked in the Deoxit, and uh, back and forth. And then I take the uh, base of the tubes, and I just make sure that they're in good shape. Sometimes I'll use the abrasive pad as well and uh, put a little deoxid on it. And at the same time, it's a good time to go check your tubes and uh, just make sure that the uh, base is secure and the grid caps are secure. And if uh, they're loose, just get you some uh, super glue made for glass and get them back in place. All right, I'll go ahead and uh, repeat this for the four tube sockets. Okay, I think that gets those uh, pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna just go around the uh, tube socket here and get up any residue. All right, let me uh, check these tubes out now, and uh, I'll do that off camera and see what we've got that. Just want to go in here and make sure all the uh, pins, there's no uh, corrosion or anything on them. And uh, maybe clean those up just a bit as well. Uh, being mindful not to rub the numbers off. I'll get them back inserted uh, here in the uh, chassis. and I'll use my uh, pad right here and, and just loosen it up, not uh, scrubbing real hard at all. And then I'll put a little deoxid on the uh, pins as well and then uh, take and uh, clean up this uh, tube base also before reinserting it into the uh, clean tube sockets. Real quick, I almost forgot um, one step here. Again, I'll use my uh, Labelle's 202 gear oil here on the uh, tuning condenser by uh, placing a little bit here on the shaft in this area, this area, and in the ball bearings. And then once I put just a, a drop or two of oil I'll go in and put some of the uh, Labelle's 206 grease in the bearings and uh, just pack a little bit in there, uh, rotate it around. This thing's already free as can be, so I can only imagine what it's going to be once it gets the uh, proper uh, oil and grease. Let me do that. You'll see the chassis out now. Everything's cleaned up. And uh, again, I've still got these resistors over here tacked in. And got a couple holes in the speaker that um, I need the tin to. But uh, we'll attempt to bring this thing up on the uh, variac and see what happens. Let me attend uh, to this real quick. All right, again, you can see how uh, free this thing is now. Uh, superb. Okay, folks, uh, time is uh, here now. It's time to uh, fire back up the old uh, Peter Pan radio from the early to mid-1930s uh, for the first time after uh, doing a, a quick restore on it. Hopefully it'll play. But, um, hey, just a word out there to other folks getting into the hobby. I remember when I started, I would do uh, restoration work, and uh, I wasn't successful. But, uh, you know, I never saw it as a failure. I just saw it as a learning opportunity. So, for some reason, if this doesn't come back up, no big deal. We'll go troubleshoot it stage by stage and try to understand why. And then learn from, you know, that mistake or something new that occurred. So I thought I'd pass that along. You know, just don't give up. Stay steady. Take your time. And... Uh, you know, you'll figure these things out. All right, uh, I've got the meter hooked up, and uh, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure the uh, B plus voltage right here on the plus side of Charlie 8. That's the second uh, electrolytic uh, cap. That should have our highest voltage on it, feeding the uh, the, the uh, B plus supply. And uh, I would guess in the high 200s to 300 range, based on the transformer output estimated voltage and I definitely want to get back and um, do some testing and see what the true voltages are for the filaments heaters 
and the uh, high voltage winding in the set as well. So there's a few things here to still fix. I've got three holes in the speaker. I need to square up so I don't think the quality is going to be that great. Second, um, TRF sets are really not known well for their quality with the exception of a local station. And there's a lot of experts that would say a tune radio frequency uh, receiver would actually sound better than a uh, superhertz. Anyway, let's uh, let's see what happens here. We'll go over to the uh, DC side. Again, I've got things tied in here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the radio on and turn the volume three fourths of the way up. We'll get things uh, plugged in. to the Variac and power it on. My particular uh, Variac as well, it's uh, a little slow responding here out of the gate. So I have to get it up around 50-60 volts or so to have much impact. And the key thing here to look at, and this is a good sign, Look at our DC voltage climbing extremely quick here. And hopefully that's showing up there in the camera. Let me turn this, tilt it back just a bit so you guys can see it. And uh, real quick here, let me run down and then check the current. So I think when we fired this up before, I think the current reading was somewhere around what point something three eight just under uh, point four amps at current so I think it's safe to go ahead and bring the voltage up a bit higher so let's see if I can get it here around 75 volts or so and drop back down to the current. Let's just make sure it stays steady there. And again, I got the volume. That's wide open. I don't hear anything. We should be at that point, though, voltage-wise, that the uh, tubes uh, should probably produce some uh, some quality sound. Or not quality, but at least get some audio. So let me uh, vary the uh, tuning condenser here because we've probably got it bottomed out around 550 kilocycles or so. That's a good sign. there just for a moment and again we're still sitting at 0.20 uh, amps and you can see the uh, DC voltage there looks to be fairly consistent at 160 volts. Let me go ahead and uh, bring up the uh, voltage a little higher here. Let's take it up to about 90 volts or so and uh, just hang out there for a bit. And you can see the current uh, jumped up just a bit. And uh, look at the DC voltage all the way up to uh, 238 volts. Again, I still got to work with this uh, volume control. And again, the volume control really resides in the RF section. As you can see here, again, kind of a recap, R1, and then I've tacked on some um, additional external resistors here. So this is not ideal. This particular uh, potentiometer I'm using is, uh, I think, around 7,000 ohms. And I think the schematic here, you can see, calls for 10K. So um, I don't have quite things balanced out. I'm going to check with my dad and see if he's got an old pot that I can use. 
and then if not then I'll try to maybe tweak things here just a bit see if we can make it uh, perform better There's a fine line here between the adjustments on the radio itself and the volume control. I think the key is to have your hand on the volume control and just rock the uh, tuner back and forth till you get the uh, desired sound. Alright, let me... Uh, Go ahead and get the voltage up a little bit higher now. Let's go ahead and go all the way up to about 105. Okay, we'll hold it there. Now let's uh, see what we can tune in, see if it sounds any better here. Getting the uh, B plus voltage up where it needs to be. voltage up a little bit higher. I'll take it on up to about 115 volts or so here. let everything stabilize. You can look at that DC voltage over there, extremely uh, pleased with that. Again, in this on the schematic itself, we have some documented uh, voltage readings. We can go back and reference, but uh, I would expect those to read a little bit lower than what we would read. Again, that would just be the difference of the loading of the meter for the time. Okay, not sure what happened there. Let me get back over on the current side real quick. Yeah, I think it's, it all has to do here with this uh, potentiometer. I may have a dead spot in it as well. You can hear it there, but it may just be the bias control itself for the uh, tube itself. I just got to the cutoff point. Because again, I don't have the right values here. Just barely moving the uh, volume control, and again, I keep saying volume, but again, it's more like an RF attenuation. Letting more signal uh, pass through to the uh, grid of the 58, and again, creating a bias on the cathode is my understanding, and we'll confirm that uh, later on doing some voltage uh, measurements. But again, it seems to be playing fairly well.
See if I can get the volume up high enough here. We can hear this. You can hear a little bit of rattle out of the speaker again. I wouldn't be surprised if the surround itself is not loose in more areas than the uh, up here where I've knocked a hole in it in the other uh, horizontal cut that I showed earlier. So when I put some glue on it here, I'll uh, try to just kind of glue around the rim at the gasket itself. And uh, then we'll come back and play it later and see if it's a little cleaner. There's not much to the alignment on these. Again, there's no IF coil or anything to adjust. And again, with the inductance already preset for the uh, RF coils, your only adjustment really are the two trimmers on the uh, tuning condenser themselves. So what I tried to do with the LCR meter was go back and mirror what I had uh, when we left off. Again, I think the upper tuning of this radio is somewhere around uh, 1700 um, and the bottom end is around 550 or so. And there's no adjustment typically for the bottom end, I believe, unless you kind of bend the uh, fins on the uh, capacitor itself. And I notice these have already been bent just a little bit. So um, what I'll do is just try to, later we'll do another video, and I'll try to uh, peek out the uh, trimmers and uh, what I found works best on the uh, TRFs is to pick somewhere in the middle of the band um, maybe 11, 1200 somewhere in that area or even a thousand and uh, adjust somewhere in that area find a balance between the low and the high the dials were never that uh, accurate anyway so uh, good news here folks at least this thing is working so good. So, uh, hey folks, thanks for uh, watching, again, this uh, video series, and uh, glad to get this thing uh, cranked back up. I'll go ahead and do a couple more videos. Let me see what I can come up with here on another uh, potentiometer, or again, play around with these external uh, caps that I've got tacked in. Uh, lower that value, maybe, a bit, and see if that improves the uh, reception. Again, I haven't even checked these tubes. And if I did uh, a year or two back, I sure don't have the documentation to show what kind of health they're in. So I'll probably run those through the uh, tube tester as well. We'll uh, play around here with the uh, trimmers on the uh, cap. And then we'll get back inside the uh, chassis and uh, look at some of the voltages themselves off the transformer and uh, just see how close, again, those calculated uh, readings were. So, folks, thanks again for uh, watching this little fire up here on the uh, Peter Pan radio, manufactured by the uh, Gilfillan Brothers. Model 4T is my understanding, back from the early to mid-1930s.